and welcome to Traditional Painting the Digital Way. This is where I use digital painting apps to teach traditional painting techniques. One of my subscribers requested that we learn how to paint the sea, so this is going to be a brand new series on how to paint a seascape. In this part one, we're going to go ahead and paint the sky and the clouds. If you're following along traditionally, I have a list of all the brushes and the paint that I use. The brushes that I use are a 2 inch flat wash, a number 10 bristle brush, a number 8 filbert brush, a number 10 flat brush, a number 6 flat brush, a long script brush, and a short script brush. You can also use a round brush in place of the short script brush if you want to. The canvas that I like to use is canvas board but I also like to use wrapped canvas. It just depends on what you want to do. Uh, the paint that I use is acrylic paint, but you can follow along in oils. And I like to use Grumbacher Academy and sometimes Liquitex and also De La Rowney. And the color names will vary according to the brand. We're going to be using the Infinite Painter app for Android. And I went to pixabay.com and I found some royalty free uh, photo references and I picked three of them that I liked and we're going to make this picture a combination of the three. I went ahead and chose the black oil brush to make the, the beginning sketch and you can use vine charcoal or pencil whatever you want when you're following along traditionally. And we're just going to make a really rough sketch. This sketch is not going to be very detailed. We just kind of want to put the main picture elements in here and we're not really interested in making a whole lot of details at this point. We just kind of want to put the main elements here and, and where you want some of your big waves and just kind of place all that where, where you... Um, see it later. I also wanted to add a little bit of texture so in Infinite Painter if you click on the layers palette you can go ahead and find a texture for your canvas and I wanted sort of a, a canvas look. There's all different kinds of, of textures and so I went ahead and picked the canvas one and your paint will react to it. That's what I really like about this program. And then I'm going to go ahead and pick a sky color and I'm using the Leo brush for the sky and you can use your 2 inch flat wash brush for this especially if you're using a big painting if you're you know if you're using a big canvas if you want to do a big painting and I'm probably going to pick ultramarine blue and a touch of dioxazine purple in it and then throw in some white acrylic gesso and we just kind of want a, a medium blue color. We don't want a real light color, but we don't want a real dark blue. Kind of just medium. And <clears throat> just go ahead and put in the sky using sort of X-shaped strokes. They're, they're like a crisscross. And when you're painting along traditionally, this really helps to blend in the sky. And then I want to go ahead and add some pink to the bottom because in my photo reference there's some pink and you would use cadmium red light with white acrylic gesso for this and then I also want to throw in cadmium orange with some white and mix this with the pink on the bottom there just to give this a, a sort of a sunset color and then you can go ahead and keep using x-shaped strokes especially if you're following along traditionally. And if you're following along on Infinite Painter, it's working fairly well, but I decided that it's not blending quite as well as I want it to. Now I'm using the Leo brush for this and it's kind of blending out the edges, which is what you want. But <clears throat> I needed to go ahead and kind of get it a little bit smoother. So I went ahead and blended the colors a little bit more and I blended the light colors up into the blue just to kind of soften it and make it look like the sunlight's hitting it. And then I went to the airbrush category or the spray brush category and used the Mirando brush to really smooth out the sky in 
on the Infinite Painter app. Now, traditionally, the X strokes, if you're following along traditionally, the X shaped strokes will make a nice blend. And then now I want to go ahead and put dark clouds in. So I'm using a dioxazine purple mixture, probably with just a touch of white in it, but we want kind of a dark purple here. And you can use the Leo brush or the Vince brush and just kind of make rough strokes in the corner here and just sort of in the shape of the cloud on your photo reference. And they don't have to be perfect at this point. You just kind of want to blend them in. So I'm using the Mirando brush an Infinite Painter. And if you're following along traditionally, just use your number 10 bristle brush and just scrub in the edges till they're really soft. Then I want to go ahead and add um, the light color here. And this is cadmium orange uh, with um, some white in it. And we want it to be kind of a, a really light orange. And you can use the um, Kurt brush for this. It's, uh, it's the charcoal version, actually, of Infinite Painter's charcoal version, I guess. And you just kind of want it because it, it looks like a fluffy texture and it's a cotton ball texture. And it really makes a nice shape for the clouds. And so I, I went ahead and used it to go ahead and, and add the lighter colors to the cloud. You can also switch back to the Vince brush, just back and forth between brushes, just whatever you want to use to, t to get your desired effect. You, right now we don't want big details in the clouds. We're just trying to get rough strokes and just place the colors. And I've also added probably a little bit of burnt sienna will work well to the orange mixture, just to darken it on the bottom. And just go ahead and follow along with your uh, photo reference here to see what the cloud shapes are. So add darks and lights, just what you see on your photo reference here. And go ahead and add it in the corners and on the top. And then I threw in some pink color because there's pink color in the clouds. So use cadmium red light with some white. And just go ahead and throw it in the mixture of your clouds. Go back to your darks. Use dioxazine purple. And just go ahead and use your number 10 bristle brush. If you're following along traditionally, keep using the Kurt brush or Kurt pencil, whatever you want to call it. It's in the pencil category for the clouds. And just keep making soft, rounded, sort of cotton ball shapes because that's what we want right now is just cotton ball shapes. We're not into the big details yet. And go ahead and put some dark on the bottom of your clouds like it has in your photo reference. And then you can go ahead and blend this in. Just kind of blend this all in and this will be your underpainting for the cloud. And an underpainting is just basically your first layer of paint. And it establishes your base color. And then you can go back and refine the shapes and add more highlights and add more darks. And just keep, go just keep building your layers up, basically. That's the way I work with it. And it works with acrylics and it works with oils. To use this technique, just keep using layers and building up from there. And then I'm going ahead and blending in the dark colors and blending them into the light colors and just kind of getting this the shapes and the color placement correct. So this is the end of part one of our seascape series and in part two we're going to work more on the clouds and just add more details and more highlights and just make further refinements to them. So thanks everybody for watching. Thank you for all your support. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments down below. And I will catch you later.